Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. So I thought it would be super fun to do a pick a card reading about who you will marry. You know, this is just for fun. So, you know, let's have fun with it. So, you know, pile number one, you know, is or group number one is the ace of heart. Group number two is the two of hearts and group number three let me get my feather yeah so group number three is the three of hearts so it's group number one group number two and group number three take your time see which number resonate with you pause the video if you have to and let's get into it hello group number one so you guys selected the ace of hearts I've already pre-shuffled the cards and I'm going to be selecting um, three cards to give me an understanding of you. You know, basically you, how you show up, your inner conversations and how others perceive you. And then I'm going to be picking one to tell me like basically what's happening in your life at the time of you meeting your person. So it's four cards all together for you. And then this is your person. Okay. Wow. Okay, you guys, I don't think I've ever selected so many cards. Okay, so basically with the eight of pens, the eight of wands coming up representing your energy, I could tell that you are someone who is always on the move, possibly someone who could have strong fire energy within your chart or yeah, fire energy within your chart or even life path, birthday number, strong energy five or even the number three. You're someone who's always on the move, someone who is all about their business, because basically when it comes to your inner conversations, the chariot come up, comes up here. So I could tell that your inner conversations are one where it's like you're always thinking about how you can get ahead, how you can make things happen. And when it comes to say how other people see you, other people see you as someone who is always climbing up the ladder, someone who is always achieving, someone who is always making things happen. And it's interesting that the card that shows up when it comes to how you guys, you know, basically what's happening in your life when you guys met is like, it's like, say for those of you who are still in school or whatever, you know, say you guys could meet like, you know, like basically in college or say, you know, basically you guys meet while you're at work, even though, yeah, you guys meet while you're at work or basically meet to me when you guys are at like the top of your game type of vibe. And, you know, it could be something that seems by accident, but let me get into the reading because I'm jumping too far ahead of myself. So when it comes to like these two dice, this helps me to okay so when it comes to your energy gemini came up and north node south node came up 
So when it comes to your energy, Gemini coming up, you don't have to be Gemini, but the Gemini energy comes up to say that you're someone who is um, communicative or you're someone who is a fast and swift communicator. I'm getting someone who speaks really fast. Like I'm getting someone who speaks really fast. Like I feel like I'm speeding up who I'm speaking and also to I'm picking up on like this doesn't go for everyone but like someone who is like really small frame small built really really petite that doesn't have to be everyone but like you know someone who's really petite so it's like even though like you could be 40 something year, years old but you look like you're like 12 years old you know and with the Gemini energy here you know someone who like, you know, quick with the comeback, quick with the clap back when it comes like someone who is good at like cracking. Remember, like growing up, you know, depending on how old you are, there used to be the your mama jokes. It's like you guys are the type of people that's quick with the comeback, quick with the clap back. And you don't have to be really petite in body, but there's something about the way you look, something very um young and youthful about the way you look. Um, you have a young face, maybe a baby face. Um, yeah, a baby face about you. Like for some of you or even maybe one person, it could be a situation where somebody teases you about having a little head, you know, a, a little old head or something like that. Something about the head, the face is little or just the body overall is, you know, smaller. Like that's something that's coming up. And when it comes to your person, you know, your person is a bit like different from you. Let me pull some astro dice so we could get into your person. Okay, so when it comes to your person, I'm getting a different vibe. And you guys, you and your person probably makes a nice match for the simple fact that they're more on the chill side because Scorpion and Scorpio energy came up for them and Jupiter energy also came up for them. And they don't have to be a Scorpio, but like basically someone who is really reserved, probably a water sign because the cup energy did come up twice. You know, someone who is laid back, very chill, someone who is not as fiery and energetic as you. So it creates a nice balance for when it comes to your personality, because you're someone who is constantly on the go. And when it comes to them, to me, I'm getting something that's like so much more energized. It's almost like when it comes to you guys, I get the vibe like opposites attract because something about the way how they're so chilled and laid back, it's almost like they pour water on your fire to a certain extent. It's not that they fully out your fire, but you guys together create a lot of steam because like, you know, I look at the cup that the card that represents them, the Knight of Cups. And with them, they themselves too, might have a young they might be younger than you and if not younger than you there's something youthful about the way they look youthful about the way they come off and when it comes to their inner world and things like that they might not be that trusting and also too they might be someone who like goes within themselves and they get really quiet and maybe they like to escape through reading and learning things and whatnot someone who likes to educate themselves and to me like upon meeting them, this might come off as a type of person that doesn't want a relationship or isn't relationship oriented. It's like, to me, like they come off as someone who is like, like the Scorpio energy is here, but I'm also thinking of Aquarian energy too, even though the lovers in reverse, you know, is connected to Gemini energy. I'm thinking of someone who seems like, like someone who disagrees a lot, that kind of vibe. Like someone who like you would think that they don't want to be bothered, that kind of vibe. It's like that's the energy that I'm getting where it's like this person could easily be misread and misunderstood. And I feel like when it comes to their inner world, when it comes to love, like maybe upon me and this person, they may have felt like they didn't want a relationship because of whatever it is that they've been through. And I feel like when it comes to you who's reading, even if you're the feminine, you probably take on the masculine role in this connection where you probably do a lot of the chasing or put a lot of effort in when it comes to this person, because this person is someone, like I said, they're very reclusive and they're very introverted. And even if, and, and you give off a more extroverted vibe. And even if you're introverted in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you come off more extroverted, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one setting, you're probably chit chatting a lot. You talk a lot where with them, they're kind of in themselves. It's like, I think of a hermit, crab within itself 
or like, you know, I think of like a turtle within, it, within its shell and then like the Scorpio energy. So there's someone who's very introverted and deep inside of themselves, you know, so from them being so deep within themselves, it's easy to like misunderstand them and to think that they don't care. But one thing when it comes to you guys, it's like when you guys want something, you go after what you want and you don't you don't let anything stop you. So when it comes to your person, like at first, like you would think that this person is not interested in you. And I feel like when it comes to you guys, like the way how you guys would have even been around each other in the first place, I feel like it's it's like you guys met in the workplace or you met at school. But it's almost like I get like a um a constituent vibe, meaning that you guys have this thing that you show up to every single day. And it is from the thing that you show up to every single day is what bonds you guys together. Where it's like maybe you're like the annoying classmate or the annoying coworker who's always asking a bunch of questions. And from you always asking a bunch of questions, it's like you challenge this person to communicate and you pull them out of their shell in ways that they didn't even think is possible. But I feel like you guys make such a good match for each other because you guys give me like Aries, Leo, Sag vibes, where it's like you guys give me that fiery vibes and they're more chill and they let you shine. It's not a situation where it's like, say in past relationships, you may have felt like that person is always in competition with you and you got to keep up competition with your partner or whatever, where in this situation, you don't feel like this person is in competition with you because they're cool with being them. And basically they allow you to be you. And, but the only, but with them, you know, the whole pessimism and not trusting to me is something that may have been an issue. And with them, they may have struggled with like some kind of addiction at some point, maybe they had a gambling issue or maybe drinking or some kind of an addiction that they may have struggled with or may have was overcoming when you met them, you know, but overall what connects you guys, you know, like basically with them, you love like how deep and into like basically how deep and intellectual they are when it comes to like, you know, having conversation. It's like you can talk to them about things that like you can't talk to most people with, but at first glance, you would have never known that this person is so deep and like, you know, have opinions about things, but it's almost like you have to like force it out of them type of vibe where it's like you guys didn't give up on them. And from you not giving up on them and keep on pushing for, you know, conversation and communication, like to me, that's what helped you guys to bond and really get to know each other on a deeper level. Like when it comes to like, um, basically what was happening in you in y'all lives when you met so to me with you having the world card um showing up to me like the world card showing up talks about seasons and cycles and things like that it's like you both have the major arcana showing up and to me the world card deals with like you know seasons and cycles within one's lives and then the magician energy showing up so it's like to me, when it comes to like where you guys were, when you guys met, I feel like it's like I mentioned, it's like basically, it's like, it's like with this connection, this connection was definitely faded. And it was definitely faded for the simple fact that like the two major arcana energy shows up and two energies that's powerful. With this energy, to me, it's like, say you've been working on something for the longest and you finally got promoted and moved into a new position or a new school or you moved into something, you know, basically it was time for it. You had to work for it and you moved into that phase within your life. And for them where they were in their life, it's like to me, it's like, like I mentioned, say they were struggling with something and they've been working on it and they finally put everything together. Like basically they finally pull all their strengths together, all their knowledge, all their years of experience, and they're finally making things happen. And it's like, that's how you guys meet. And you guys meet at a time when it's like, you're both on the same level within your life at the moment, same level within your life at the moment, in the sense that like maybe um, at the time, like you could be doing completely different things, but it's like, you both equally put the same amount of work in. Maybe, you know, you both went through challenging relationships and hard times and things like that. And at a time when like, you know, you guys have done the work and, you know, done the work and ready 
to heal and connect with others is when you when you met but to me when it comes to you guys like you guys don't allow anything to ever get you down because like you're always on the move you're always trying to achieve like also to when it comes to this you guys like some of you might have capricorn ascendant or capricorn 10th house or even taurus like 10th house or ascendant or even capricorn in the sixth house for you guys you know like that might be a placement when it comes to you guys because it's like you're always like very ambitious and always on the go and always trying to achieve and you know even if this is a female that chose this group like you guys um come off like the father energy you know may basically you father the people and mother and nurture the people who come into your life but it's like i'm getting the tough love type of vibe where it's like you guys don't play and some of you guys probably like may have been um may have been vets may have been in the military may have or doesn't have to be but there's like a no nonsense like aggressive but playful vibe about you and when it comes to your partner like they're very laid back very chill very into themselves and when it comes to like what's happening within y'all lives when y'all met i'm really getting like um i'm really getting like like um what do you call it like basically like graduation like that's the energy that i'm getting when it comes to what was happening in y'all life when y'all met and let me pull some more dice to see so gemini energy again comes up for you gemini energy fifth house um wow fifth house comes up for both of you pisces and gemini and fifth house deals with like pleasure it deals with fun it deals with escapism like for some of you like when you guys met maybe you guys were in a time of your life where you guys were clubbing partying having a good time you know that could have been something that was going on within y'all lives when y'all met pisces and gemini energy like gemini is a very social energy you have gemini energy here already so you were at like a super social place in your life when you guys met where this person was at more of an escapist place so like say for example you guys work at the same place or meet through mutual friends maybe this is your friend's brother or you know basically a family member of someone that you know type of connection and you know you were in the mood to get social go out hang out this person was just more in the mood to like escape so like say for example you guys would get together and say have drinks or you would you know have drinks and smoke or whatever you guys would do if you do that and basically it's like you know basically they were just for the escape of it and you were for the social aspect of it and also to the number five energy deals with children and I keep mentioning the youthfulness about each of you. Like maybe you guys work with children. Maybe you guys were both in school for, you know, to work with the youth in some way. Or maybe, you know, you guys like basically have children and it's through your children how you guys connected. You know, that's something that's also coming up when it comes to like both person but i love like the synchronicity the matching it's like when it comes to this connection this connection is definitely faded and what's also coming to mind as i'm reading this is that some of you might meet your person like later on in life like say in your 40s or at an older age where you didn't think that was possible where you can possibly meet through your children and things like that but like basically it's like even like as time go by and you know say you're in your 40s you're in your 50s you know you're older it's like you guys don't stop moving you guys do not stop moving where with this other person on the other hand like they're more chilled and laid back and within themselves and it's like to me i feel like with this person they don't give off the energy where they're they are as ambitious as you yes they like to read they like to learn things or maybe they like to travel you know what I mean? And they're very introspective and, and with themselves and pretty deep, like they're into the whole spiritual stuff, even if they don't talk about it. Like if, you know, they're comfortable, they'll let you know, like this is a person that has dreams and premonitions and visions and things like that. But it's not something that they go advertising to everyone because it's not like, you know, basically they're comfortable within themselves. Like I'm getting the kind of person that's comfortable within themselves, the kind of person that's confident 
about themselves and who they are. So it's like when it comes to like y'all personality, to me, y'all personality is a perfect match for each other because you're more out there, you're outgoing. Even if you're a female, you're more masculine in the sense that you're action oriented. You know, you're, you're a go-getter. You're, you're always doing things and making things happen. Where with this person, this person is more of a patient person. This person, you know, takes their time. This person basically doesn't have any issues when it comes to being patient and, you know, playing the long game where the frustration with you can come from like you wanting things to happen like yesterday and, you know, that be a big issue. But when I look at overall, look at the person that you will marry, like this is so fun and I'm so glad that I did this because it took me so long to do this because I think I take myself too seriously when it comes to these readings. And I would love for you guys to also share with me in the comments like ideas of certain readings that you would like for me to do. But like, yeah, when it comes to this connection, like you both are young and youthful, but young and youthful in your own way, regardless of how old you guys are. You know, you're more fiery and airy and they're more earthy and watery, like a more stabler vibe, like even like when I'm picking up on your energies, like I feel like I need to talk fast. Whereas like with their energy to me, they might talk slower like me, you know, with a, a slower or lower tone like me, where it's like I could see with them like Mercury in a water or earth placement or even Saturn conjunct their Mercury or something like that, where with you it is totally different. But I love how you guys compliment each other. So YouTube, you know, this is your reading. There is an extended version that is available on Patreon where I go deeper into it. If that's something that you're interested in or looking to get your natal chart read, the link is in the description box below. Please let me know that you're here with me by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number two. So group number two, I'm going to be pulling three cards that represents you and three cards that represents your person. And then I'm going to be selecting a fourth card that talks about basically where, like what's happening in y'all lives when y'all met. Okay. Alrighty. So let's get these astro dice. That's for you. And let's get this for your person. Okay. All right. Group number two. So when it comes to you, like you have the hermit in the reversal position and with the hermit in the reversal position, I get the feeling that like, you know, you also have cancer and Uranus energy showing up. So what's coming to mind immediately when it comes to say some of you who pick this pile, like some of you who pick this pile might be the type of people who actually need time and silence, but you avoid it. And from avoiding that time and silence, you know, sometimes you can experience a lot of anxiety. And to me, that's because your mind moves very quickly. Your mind moves very quickly where your mind is always thinking and processing so much. It's like I'm getting cardinal mind energy. You don't have to be cancer energy, but I know that you're someone who is very futuristic, someone who is family oriented and someone who thinks a whole lot. And like I said, basically someone who needs time and silent, but you probably avoid the silence. So what's coming to mind when I say that, like I'm thinking of someone with strong, say number five energy, number three energy, you know, cancer, Aquarius, Gemini energy, you don't have to be any of that, but sun, moon, rising energy coming up. And when it comes to, say, your inner world and inner conversations, you know, you're someone who is constantly focusing on this, on stability, stability, security, and how you can like have more and just enjoy a good life. When it comes to like how you come off, 
like to me you come off as someone who is almost like i get the feeling that like say when it comes to this group like say growing up like i could see some of you being the type of people that probably got in trouble for like for like doing too much when i say doing too much like you're probably just being yourself and it's like from the process of just being yourself is like if another person is insecure they would make it seem like you're doing something wrong in the process of being yourself so it's like when i look at this energy here i get like someone who possibly has like chiron saturn chiron saturn lilith and leo or aries is like something about your fire energy is restricted so it's like you know you guys might find yourself thinking a whole lot but then struggling with taking action and that's what might cause like the anxiety or the frustration or like a busy mind where when it comes to your person your person is someone who shows up very fiery someone who shows up like you know someone who shows up very fiery also someone who is nurturing and mothering like you i feel like that's something that you and your person both have in common is like this person is a natural giver i think both of you like you know like to give back like to like are both humanitarian type of people the type of people that puts others first and you know when it comes to your inner world inner conversations i feel like you both come from like a traditional background to a certain extent or are trying to break out of like the traditional backgrounds that you come from because there are some things about the traditional backgrounds that you guys come from that might be a bit of a hindrance in the sense of who you guys are and what it is that you guys are trying to achieve because with your person you know their inner world and their focus is always like on like trying to get more trying to have more it's like they're always thinking about like how they can make more money how they could do more or how they can help and be of service to other people like when i think of you guys um this the group that picked this pile like i can see how you and your person or maybe just you might be um pet people where it's like you have fur babies type of people you know the kind of people that are super selfless and just chill people like not the kind of people that's so like you know ego driven and you know it's like basically it's like having a nice like having a, the simpler things in life and being in the presence of the ones you love i feel like that's more important for you guys more than anything else and when it comes to say like how your person comes off i feel like you and your person both come off very similar in the sense that like both of you guys come off in a way where it's like you guys don't show a lot of like ego like ego in the sense that like it's like even if you guys are confident people like you both come off like you guys are very humble like that's the word that i'll use it's like you guys are very humble people you know virgo energy cancer energy you guys are very serving energy moon coming up and complementing cancer energy and then um uranus energy complementing the whole virgo service energy to be you guys are service type of people you guys are here to serve others here to serve humanity and you love serving and giving back in whatever ways that you can you guys are super selfless and just gentle people and your person is very similar to that except that your person is a little bit more fiery is a, is, a, is a bit more fiery than you are i feel like you have it within you to be that but you restrict that about yourself and it's like basically your person kind of gives you the permission to show that side of yourself it's like this person kind of like encourages you to like be more confident just by you watching them when it comes to their confidence and their confidence is not one that's arrogant it's it's like basically it's a natural confident within themselves but i feel like that's something that builds up with them over time because they weren't always that confident person you know at one point they were someone who was more reclusive and shy someone who was more of a people pleaser you know something that i believe that you're trying to overcome or that you are still working on and when it comes to like um what was happening um what was happening um within you at the time of your meeting and when i say what was happening within you it could be like emotionally what's happening you know what's happening within your life what's happening around you 
at the time of your meeting. So I'm going to pull some, I'm going to pull some um, Astro Dice for that. We have the one and the south node and the number one energy for them. And we have Saturn in the 12th house. I mean, north node in the first house for you, Saturn in the 12th house for them. Maybe it's reversed and it's like basically this is them and this is you. You know, go with whichever one that fits. But when it comes to say like basically what's happening um what's happening at the time of you guys meeting i have first house south node energy here so that means north node is in the seventh house and this is the page of sword energy and the page of swords energy talks about like basically it's the beginning it's the younger swords energy so to me it talks about mental energy younger energy more immature type of energy to a certain extent so when it comes to the place in your life where you were i feel like at the time like basically you guys could be like what's coming to mind is like i think of the page energy and i think of like the whole like like say for example what's coming to mind is like say you're out somewhere and you're on the phone having a conversation with a friend because like say whenever you go somewhere and you are alone it's probably awkward to be alone so you probably always get on the phone and probably talk to your mom or talk to someone as you're doing whatever it is that you're doing to kind of keep your company while you do it to me it's like that's what you are doing at the time of you guys meet so you got you're doing something and you're on the phone and you're chit-chatting with someone to kind of like um basically to kind of like keep your company as you do whatever it is that you're doing and you know when it comes to this person so basically that's where you were at the time like basically that's what's happening with you at the time where when it comes to where you guys will meet i'll go over that later but like when it comes to say you know this person they have 12th house saturn energy so to me with saturn energy 12th house and then the world energy here i feel like when it comes to this person like maybe they are the type of person that could have um recently graduated from say school for like psychology or maybe like recently in a weird situation like maybe like may have been released from some kind of a program you know for some people you know it could be like maybe they were okay so i'm gonna spit it out and i'm gonna say it like i see it because this is a general reading we're having fun here this is for fun it's general so many people are watching maybe they you know did time and got out of incarceration that's what's coming to mind here and i was having a hard time spitting it out but maybe, you know, they had a situation with incarceration and basically they just came out and, you know, you guys met then. I look at the world card and, you know, basically seasons and, you know, the orderly and I look at the 12th house and I know the 12th house deals with isolation and Saturn energy deals with authority. So they may have been coming out of something where they were like basically free from some kind of authority type of situation. And at the time, you know, you guys met, like maybe say you guys both was like in a place somewhere. And I guess as I get into like where you guys will meet, all of that will come out. But like, say you're somewhere where they came to like pay for something or do something and they recently just came out and, you know, basically you're on the phone with whoever trying to just being on the phone with someone while you do whatever it is that you're doing. And for them, maybe they just graduated from college, like I said, where they went to college for psychology or, you know, they teach psychology or they teach, you know, um, spiritual spirituality and um, thinking and, um, you know, basically they teach spirituality or they teach stuff about the subconscious mind or whatnot where with your south node in the first house to me you know with your south node in the first house and then the page of sword energy um here to me i get the vibe that like 
and I mentioned with the Cancer Uranus energy, I feel like you guys overthink things a lot. So because you overthink things a lot, you're always in your head and you're also always distracting yourself from what's happening around you. So I'm not sure how this person got your attention, but I'm sure like eventually we'll get into it within the reading, the deeper we get into the reading. But just looking at you both, something that you both have in common is pentacle energy in the reversal position. And, and, the, and this card represents the moon energy. So you guys both could have like... Um, uh, Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn moons, you know, and you don't have to, but some, or, or your moon is in an earth house, you don't have to, but something about the way how y'all inner conversation is very practical, but at the same time, it's practical, but you guys kind of have a pessimist, a pessimistic way of seeing life to a certain extent. And, you know, that doesn't have to be everyone. And I say pessimistic, maybe because you guys have both been through some stuff where, you know, both of you came from a household where your moms like, you know, probably could be single moms or, you know, you both came from a household where, you know, maybe things were rough and you saw your mom struggle. And that's something that you guys bond over, something that you guys talk about. And, you know, I know, you know, when it comes to how you show up, you don't, you don't like to like show off. You know, you don't like to show off. So when it comes to your group, like I get like, you know, I get strong Aquarian energy here. I mentioned Aquarian Cancer energy. I mentioned some other energies also. And when it comes to your person, like I feel like there's someone who don't show a lot of emotions. So it's like you don't show, uh, you don't, you don't show like basically you're not showy and they don't walk with their heart on their sleeve type of vibe. So it's like, I feel like you both are guarded. You know, that's something that you both have in common. But I feel like when it comes to you guys, what you guys bond over is like what I'm getting, like I'm getting big time Aquarian vibe here, not just the whole humanitarian energy, the whole selfless wanting to serve, wanting to help, wanting to make the world a better place, you know, and I, and I'm getting Aquarian energy because Aquarian energy is that way because, you know, in order for you to want to give back to humanity and help others, you have to know what it feels like to not have gotten help. And from knowing what it feels like to not have gotten help, that's what encourages and motivates the need to want to help and be of service for others. And I feel like that's something that you guys bond over to a certain extent where you guys are the kind of people that will sit back and look at people who are like self-centered, self-absorbed and materialistic and kind of laugh at those people. Like that's the vibe that I'm getting when it comes to you and your partner. I just feel like when it comes to you and your partner, the things that bond you guys together are things that like can keep you guys together for the simple fact that like when it comes to this person who you'll marry, it keeps you guys together for the simple fact that it's like you guys are bonded together because of a cause. It's like, you know, say if this person did have a hardship and they did do some time time and, you know, where they needed mental help or they, you know, were locked up or something like that. It doesn't have to be that. It's like you're not someone who's judgmental. You're very understanding, you know, where some, some people will be a bit snobbish and judgy for that. You're very understanding. And the challenge is, though, you know, both of you feel like you guys can fix people. I feel like that bonds you guys together when it comes to going out. Like, because Hermit Reverse, Virgo Energy, Virgo Energy here. Like, you guys are very, like, like the kind of people who sacrifice yourselves. And, you know, I'm going to get into the challenges and strengths and where you guys met and all that later. But, like, like you guys are the type of people that like have this vision to make the world a better place, whether you guys are getting together and, you know, helping animals at the shelter or, you know, um, dealing, like talking, having ideas about like, you know, helping the homeless or feeding the homeless because you know what it's like to be in that position. You know what it's like to like not have certain things. So you guys come together for those things. And what I think is beautiful about this connection is that, you know, those things are always going to be a thing. So it's like you guys have a common thing that bonds you guys together, that keeps you guys together. And to me, that thing that bonds you guys together is your heart. Like you both have genuine hearts where you want to go out and you want to save the world. But be careful with that because the world doesn't need saving and people don't need fixing in the sense that like, you know, the creator has everything under control. But yes, in the process of us 
freely expressing ourselves and doing what brings us joy, other people get to benefit in the process. So it's like, be careful how you guys burden yourself, you know, trying to save the world. I feel like a lot of your energy and attention on the world, some of it should go back into like yourselves and, you know, basically better, like basically better in yourselves, however way you guys can, because I get that vibe with, you know, this kind of couple. It's like, you guys, it's like, basically you guys are so focused on the world. Like say money comes in, it's like, okay, we need to donate this. We need to give this, like focus on what's happening in the home. Like that's, that's the thing that's stepping up, but you guys have such big hearts you know big hearts very caring and loving people because you guys have been through things and because you guys have been through things you don't judge people you know youtube this is your reading the extended version is available on patreon and it goes longer and deeper if that's something that you're interested in or looking to get your natal chart read the link for that is the in the description box below Please let me know that you're here with me by dropping me an orange heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number three. So this is about who you will marry. So I've already pre-shuffled the cards. I'm going to be selecting um, three cards to tell me about you and a fourth card for you to tell me what's happening in your life around the time that you guys met, your mindset, whatever, what's happening for you. And then I'm going to do the same for your person. Okay, group number three, let's get some dice in there. Okay, so when it comes to like your message and basically who you will marry and what's happening in your life, around the time you guys you know basically what's happening so i'm already getting a, a a clear message here so when it comes to this group i feel like when it comes to this group you guys are the type of people who you probably will get married you probably like have been married before some of you a small few of you you know so this would probably be your second or others of you it might take you um some time to get married and it's not because it's hard to find someone i feel like deep down when it comes down to it in this connection it's like it took you guys a long time to like get to know yourself when i say get to know yourself what i mean by that is i feel like when it comes to this group maybe earlier on some of you may have thought that you guys were clingy people and as you mature, you realize that you were never clingy. It's just that maybe growing up, you had abandonment issues. So from abandonment issues, you would cling on to a person and um, you cling on to a person. And then once the relationship gets predictable or they get familiar, it's like you get bored easily and you move on. So to me, it may have been a thing for you guys where you feel like, like, you know, feel like, you get bored way too easy with people and yeah, you just get bored way too easy. And it's just not, it's just basically you felt like there was no one for you and there is someone for you. So let's get into it for the astro dice. You have Pisces energy and South node energy. So with Pisces energy, South node energy coming up, you guys don't have to be Pisces. You could be Pisces, sun, moon rising 
or have strong 12th house placement or Neptune placement in your chart. But what I'm getting from that is that when it comes to you guys, you guys probably work in the world of healing, um, whether that's coaching, whether that's um, Reiki, whether that's psychology, or you guys might work in the world of art. Like you guys are creative people or people who like help people on a subconscious and unconscious level. I know that you guys are people who are very intellectual and very dark, um, very sharp. The word dark was going to come to mind. And maybe the word dark comes to mind in the sense that basically, you know, when I think of dark, you know, Scorpio energy always comes up for dark or Aquarian energy. And I feel like it's almost like having an understanding of human nature. When I say dark, meaning that like you're open to the shadow and you're not just all light, you know, you're not just all love and light. You know that there's a shadow to life and you're open to that shadow. I feel like when it comes to like, say how you come off, you might come off as like, basically you might come off as someone who doesn't extend yourself to others. The justice card, you know, is tied into Libra energy and the justice card deals with balance. So I feel like with the justice card coming off on the end, you know, and you guys choosing group three and then the Pisces energy, you guys might come off as someone who is a bit inconsistent and a bit unpredictable to others. And I feel like that's because you guys have like a very busy mind, a very curious personality, and you're just not routine or structured person because the Knight of Pentacles shows up here in the reversal position. So to me, it's like you guys are far from like basically far from predictable, but at the same time, you guys are very sharp with, you're very quick with it you know, very intelligent type of people and very quick when it comes to knowledge and understanding. It's like you can cut through the BS. And because you can cut through the BS, it's like, you know, that's what makes you how you are. I feel like for some of you, maybe earlier in life, you probably struggled with reading or learning. And it wasn't because you weren't intelligent or anything like that. I feel like it comes from the fact that you get bored very easily and your imagination is just out of this world. So it's a matter of focusing that probably made things challenging for you, you know, focusing, but you have the ability to focus, but not on things that you're not interested in. And then with Pisces energy here, you guys are big when it comes to like tapping into like different things. Like you could pick up on people's energy, read people, and you're very introverted. Like you're able to go inside of yourself and make sense out of things. But to me, you guys are introverted, but in one-on-one -on -one situations, people might take you as someone who is extroverted in a one-on-one -on -one setting, but very introverted, like, you know, for the most part, because you gain your energy from going within. And with the South Node energy showing up here, it's like you guys are the kind of people that are old soul, kind of people that are ancient. And in this life, you probably feel like, you know, um, you're not like, you know how they say, oh, this person had a past life um, as this, that, that. I feel like you guys are the type of people that probably had past lives as humans, but then also remember past lives when you are not, um, past lives that are not from here, past lives that are from other galaxies, other dimensions, past lives that just weren't human. You know, you might not know how to explain it or put words to it, but you know they're past lives that just weren't human. And when it comes to your person, the nine of swords in the reversal position um, shows up for them and um, Aquarius and Jupiter energy. So to me, your person that you would marry fits you perfectly because the Aquarian energy here shows that like there's someone who needs freedom and time to themselves also. There's someone who is unorthodox, far from tradition, which your knight in reverse um, shows that you aren't someone who's traditional. The justice card also says that. So there's someone that is open to your different ideas and beliefs. And with Jupiter energy here, there's someone who is very educated and it doesn't have to be scholastically educated. It can be self-educated. There's someone who's constantly learning about other cultures or they're well-traveled, but there's something that they're always focusing on or learning. And I feel like they might be um, psychologists or professors or some someone in the educational field because the Jupiter energy gives me that. And then the Aquarian energy also gives me like a futuristic vibe. So someone who is futuristic themselves. I get the vibe that this person might also be a little bit older than you, a bit more mature than you, but at the same time, they have a very childlike and youthful energy about them. And the Knight of Swords and um, the Nine of Swords in the reversal position also says that basically they're the kind of people that like, 
you know, I get the dark vibe from them too, but not dark in a negative way, meaning that this person has been through stuff. Like say maybe this person knows what it feels like to go through depression in the past and that's something that they've overcome. And then from them overcoming that thing, they've been able to teach it to others or that's something that they work on themselves. Because with the King of Swords in the reversal position, to me, I get the vibe that this person could be like a Cancer moon scorpio moon or pisces moon where you could be like gemini moon um libra moon or aquarius moon or moon in one of those houses or it doesn't have to be like i mentioned strong 12th house pisces um watery energy also but with your person i feel like when it comes to their inner world like they're constantly questioning their it's like to me when it comes to say intuition and subconscious energy, that's something that comes natural to you. Where for them, that's something that they're constantly questioning. And I feel like that's what makes them um, question their sanity because of things that they've been through. And it's like, no, you're not someone who's practical, but for the most part, they might come off that way. So this person to me might have like um, Taurus or Capricorn or Virgo rising. I'll say um, Capricorn mainly, it doesn't have to be, but there's someone who is very hardworking and they're very busy with their work. Like whatever work that they do, they're very proud of the work that they do and they're busy with the work that they do. So you're busy doing your thing and you know your creative artistic process and they're busy with what they do. And I feel like as you mature, so the mature ones of you who are watching this, you've realized that you need to be with someone who has a hobby or has someone, um, someone who basically is has something that they enjoy to where they're not clingy and always up underneath you. Like, don't get me wrong. Like you love spending time with the people that you love and you want someone who's available to spend time with you also. But through the years, you've learned that like you probably used to think that you wanted to be someone, be with someone who was always up underneath you. And probably from past relationships, you realize that someone up underneath you like is stifling to you. And you realize that once you become more um, confident within yourself and secure with with who you are. You don't need someone underneath you all the time. So you realize it's important to be with someone who has their own thing going on, their own thing that they're passionate about, you know, where your person is mature enough and has work, a body of work that they're passionate about, a body of work that they're into. Because when I look at where they are at the time of you guys meet and meaning within themselves, you know, the four of of swords come up like i'm going to talk about where you guys meet exactly and other things later but like when it comes to like um where they are within themselves at the time of meeting the four of swords come up two and the number 2 and pluto so to me this person might be a psychologist or work in the world of psychology or even work with finances or accounting or things like that but to me, like it could be the practical side of psychology, you know, practical side in the sense that like they're not like you where, you know, you're into the unknown and, you know, the whole different realms, realities and things like that is like they have glimpse of it. But with the Aquarian energy here, to me, they go back and forth within themselves. They don't have to be Aquarius, sun, moon or rising or have strong Jupiter in their chart. But I feel like with the Aquarian energy is like think of Saturn energy and how Saturn is so traditional and deals with time and the way how things used to be and pushing that order. And then Uranus, who is also the ruler of Aquarius, that deals with innovation and being futuristic. So to me, this causes them to have this back and forth where when I mentioned the dark energy here, maybe like they struggled with depression because of the back and forth and the self-doubt. But at the time of meeting, like basically they're within us themselves where they are at peace. I feel like when it comes to you guys, you guys are the type of people that do the work. And you guys, they are the type of people that also do the work or do what they understand when it comes to the work. And the number two energy here, the second house, Pluto energy, this is them valuing their transformation, valuing their psychology and valuing, you know, doing work and putting energy in when it comes to that stuff. And when I go to say you, you know, the eight of the eight of cups shows up here for you. So I feel like the eight of cups show up here for you and the five, um, the number five and Saturn energy. 
And I feel like at the time of meeting, like basically you are in a space where you're walking away from some emotional cycle, some emotional system that you realize doesn't work for you. And then the number five energy also deals with pleasure, how we reward ourselves, you know, how we create our, how we creatively express ourselves and Saturn energy is here. So to me, maybe you guys are teaching something about emotions, teaching something about sacrifice teaching something about discipline. I feel like at the time of meeting, you guys are both in the same place in the sense that like you might be teaching something about like release and emotions and walking away from something. You know what I mean? And they are dealing with their, you know, basically transformation, psychology and things like that. Like basically you guys meet at a time where both of you have done some major work and both of you are pretty much teaching what it is that you've learned to others. That's why I feel like when it comes to this group, you will meet your person. Like if you were married before, this is your second marriage. And for some of you, it's your first marriage, but it happens later on in your life, later than you thought. You know, for some of you, it could happen after your 30s or whatever, or maybe it could be before, but I feel like when it comes to this group, like I'm getting later energy because I'm getting mature vibes, like because it takes a lot for you to come to this person who you are, and it takes a lot for this person to come to the person they are, like this kind of work takes time. And that's why I mentioned second marriage for some people, but like it could be um first marriage for some people, but just big time maturity vibe when it comes to this group, you know, and both of you guys are very dedicated when it comes to mental health. Mental health is a big thing here and mental health on their take where it's like, you know, say they go to school or are educated in psychology or something to that you know, or they dabber in that where for you, it's more of subconscious healing. Like for some, for you guys, you guys could be spiritualists and people who dive into the spiritual side of reality, because when it comes to you guys, you guys are very creative and artistic people. Where on this side, there to me are more practical type of people where you guys are more artistic and um, people who are more abstract, where they're more structured. But I feel like their structured way of being is 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 basically a fear of themselves. It's like a fear of themselves to me is their reason for being so structured, routine, and organized. And I say a fear of oneself because it's almost like say when a person is fear afraid that like they might be insane or afraid that they might lose their mind. You know that kind of fear to me can cause a person to like you know structure themselves away and live their life in a certain way you know, because it's like they're afraid of themselves. That's the best way that I can put that. But it's like when it comes to say, yeah, what's going on with you at the time? To me, it's like, you know, what's going on with you at the time? It's like, like I said, you're probably teaching something and you're teaching something that deals with emotions. Maybe you've conquered something um, and finally learned how to walk away from some system. When I say system, maybe you guys, um, the cups card deals with emotions. So maybe you guys are emotional eaters, or maybe you guys used to drink, or maybe you guys used to do something and whatever it is that you used to do, it used to restrict you. It used to hold you back. It used to get a, um, take a hold of your energy because with the Pisces energy coming up, you guys don't have to be Pisces, but I get escapism vibe where it's like both you guys, I get escapism where you might escape off into your imagination and your daydream and your fantasies, or even your mind and your thinking and your strategy where they escape off into a book. You know, they get escape off into going back to school or learning something new. You both escape to a certain extent, but escape in different ways. But I feel like with them, they really struggled with like mental health. Like mental health was a big thing for them. And that's probably what motivates their studies, what motivates their practice and whatever it is that they're working on. Where for you guys, to me, your motivation might be say addictions, but like I mentioned to food or to, it could be anything that you are, but to me it's for, it's on an emotional level. So it's like you both struggle with things, but I feel like your struggles are more emotional and they are more mental. But again, you guys come together at a time and a point in your life when you guys are mature enough to like, you know, mature enough to like help others with whatever it is that you guys 
have been through because when it comes to both of you guys, I feel like you guys are both big on serving, but serving in a different way because when it comes to this group, like when it comes to the other readings that I did and I'm trying to remember and I don't even remember, I guess that's what happens when, you know, you're so deep into the channeling of it. Well, yes, I do remember a little. The last one is like they seem more younger spirited or maybe it was the first one. The first one, I don't remember. But anyways, you guys seem like mature, very mature people. So to me, within y'all chart, you guys probably have strong um Saturn placement, Saturn sun, moon rising, strong Saturn placement, strong Jupiter placement. You know, Saturn placement could be Aquarius, Capricorn um, placements. It doesn't have to be that. But even though you're the more lighthearted, playful one, you're still very serious. Like your inner world, the way you think, the way you conduct yourself is no nonsense also. And to me, they're serious themselves. You guys are some serious people. You know, like, yes, you might have your playful way about you, but you guys are pretty serious. And when I say serious, meaning that it's not that you guys don't laugh. It's not that you guys don't have fun. You guys do laugh. You guys do have fun. You guys do have a good time together. It's just that you guys have serious roles in this life. Like you guys are very focused. Like I get the vibe from your person that your person is probably an author. That's something that you might aspire to be, but that's something that they've already done. And I feel like at the time of meeting them, they'll be working on their second book. That's something when it comes to this person and their second book about transformation, psychology, or even some kind of humanity, humanitarian type of endeavor, or even something about accounting. But whatever it is that they're teaching and talking about, I feel like transformation, psychology has a big part of it. Education, they're big time educators. And I feel like that's what you love about your person because you guys are the type of people that like you need constant stimulation. And like I mentioned, you're sharp. So it's like you need someone who is able to like communicate with you about everything, anything and nothing and challenge your thinking, you know, and not challenge your thinking in the sense that they're intimidated by you and they're jealous of you. So they try to shut you down. That's not what I mean by that. I mean, give you feedback and correct you when you're wrong, but not in a way that's rude, mean or disrespectful because they're trying to like, you know, put you in your place because they're insecure. That's not the vibe that I get with this person. I do know that this person requires a lot of time alone and you require time alone too, but I feel like they require more time alone, which I think works out as, you know, as long as you understand that this person, like, I don't get the type of person that's like a cheater or the type of person that has time for that. I feel like this person is so focused on their destiny, focused on their goals that they don't have time for like, they don't have time for foolishness. These people are very focused and you're very focused yourself. So you guys make such a great couple with each other. So I'm going to go into challenges, strengths, where exactly you guys met and go deeper. But um, yeah, you guys are a really good match for each other. I This person seems so much more mature than you, though, even though you're naturally mature. But this person seems older. So to me, it's like I feel like this person could be 10 years older than you or um, they don't have to. But this person's definitely older than you because I'm getting the vibe that even though like say every connection before this one, you always felt like you were the older one in the connection. But with this person, like they feel older than you. And what is so attractive about this person this is the this is not the kind of person that like speaks just to speak like they're the kind of person that's very good with silence so you know be okay with silence yourself because they're not the kind of people that like just talk just to talk these are the people that talk when they have something on their mind but not the kind of people that withhold communication and use it as a form of manipulation that is not this person far from it when it comes to your connection i love your connection it's like it gives me the teacher and student vibe but it's not just one way like at times you play the teacher and they play the student and at other times they play the student and you play the teacher like that's the vibe that i'm getting from your connection it's like i love it like i love this connection like i feel so connected to this reading and this connection but YouTube, that was your reading. It was such a pleasure sharing this with you. The extended version of this reading where I go deeper into it 
is available on Patreon. If you'd like to learn more about that or get your natal chart read, that link is in the description box below. Please let me know that you're here with me by dropping me a yellow heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.